Dear brothers and sisters, I wish to welcome you to the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. The word Epiphany comes from two words, Epi and Phanie, which simply means appearing upon. The word Epiphany also means manifestation, appearance, manifestation, revelation. And that's why today we say that Jesus was revealed to the whole world on this day. Remember that when Jesus was born, the angel went to the shepherds and announced the good news to them. Probably and possibly those shepherds were Jewish people, which means that at Christmas, Jesus was revealed only to the Jewish people. Now, what we are celebrating today, which is the Epiphany, is a reminder to us that Jesus was also revealed to the whole world, not only to the Jewish people, not only to a particular people, but to the whole world. So that's why he is the Lord of all mankind. My dear brothers and sisters, the revelation of Jesus to the whole world reminds us and assures us of the universal love of God that everyone is precious to God. No matter the country you come from, no matter your race, no matter your color, no matter your religion, no matter your sexual orientation, no matter your age, no matter your economic status, your social status, your tradition, your culture, the universal love of God is for everyone. And it is also important to remind us that God is eternally present in everyone. When we speak about the universality of the love of God, when we say that the love of God is universal, because that is what we are celebrating today, that God loves everyone, and that's why he revealed himself to every person, male and female, old and young, poor and rich, saints and sinners. God reveals himself to every person today. And because of this revelation, it suffices to say that God is eternally present in every person that he has created. If we remember that God is present in me, no matter my limitations, my shortcomings, my, you know, my weaknesses, it will also remind me that God is also present in the next person. But before we talk about the presence of God in the next person, let us remember that this epiphany that we celebrate today gives us a new perspective about God. Because sometimes we, we have the wrong notion about God. Maybe because of our ugly experiences, we may think that God does not love us. But from this celebration today, I am very sure that you will agree with me that God loves everyone because we are not defined by our problems. I am not defined by my misfortunes and crises and struggles. No, we are defined by the fact that we are the children of God and God is our father. Then Jesus is our big brother. So, the celebration today gives us a new perspective about God, that God is trustworthy, that we have assurance that God will never disappoint us, that we have the confidence that God will never disappoint us, that we have a positive mind. Our celebration today invites us to have optimistic mind. You see the joy, you see the joy of the Magi when the Magi saw the star. You see that joy, that is the same joy that we should have, no matter what we are going through, no matter the crisis of this moment, no matter the struggles of this moment, no matter the trials, no matter the problems, no matter whatever we are facing, the joy of the presence of God should always overcome whatever problem that we are undergoing. And that is the joy of the Magi. See, when the Magi saw the star, they were so joyful. You see, the presence of God brings joy. Remember that peace is not the absence of war. Rather, it is the presence of Christ. 
So you may be passing through so many things because just as the Magi undertook this journey from far distance, from a very far place, coming to Jerusalem, in the same way, your life, my life, is also a journey. And this journey of life can be very precarious. This journey of life can be very slippery. This journey of life can be unpredictable. But even though the journey of life may be unpredictable, we are also certain that God, that the love of God is predictable because God cannot not love. It is the nature of God to love. So even though we experience a lot of, you know, unpredictability, we experience the, the fact that life is unpredictable. Anything can happen to us anytime. At least we can hold on to the fact that God will never disappoint us. That God, you know, is faithful and his faithfulness endures forever. So in this journey of life, even if we cannot hold on to anything, we should hold on to God because his presence is always with us. Whether we are saints or sinners, remember that the love of God is independent of our sinfulness or righteousness. God loves you whether you are a saint or you are a sinner. And it is also important for us to remember that in this life, we experience, you know, sometimes the disappearance of the star. It does not mean that the star is not there, just as we talk about the eclipse of the sun or the moon. It does not mean that the moon is not there. It doesn't mean that the sun is not there. It simply means that there is an obstruction. There is a blockade. So God's presence is eternal. God's manifestation is eternal. God's revelation is eternal. God is always with us. There's no time that God is not with us. The problem is you. The problem is me. God's presence is eternal. But simply, we are obstructed. We have the obstacle of S-I-N. We have the obstacle of unbelief. We have the obstacle of bitterness. We have the obstacle of prejudice. We have the obstacle of vices. We have the obstacle of, you know, all kinds of negativity, toxicity. These things form obstacle. It does not mean that the star is not always there. The star is always there, guiding and leading us. But sometimes we are blinded. Sometimes, you know, there is an obstacle, a hindrance, impediment coming from the things I have mentioned. So, in times of this journey, dear friends in Christ, sometimes we may experience the star. Sometimes we experience darkness. Sometimes we experience ups and downs. That is part of life. As I said, life can be slippery. Life can be complicated. Life can be difficult. Life can be full of crises and trials and challenges and struggles. But always remember that the presence of God will never depart from us. Most times we are distracted by many Herods. As Herod distracted the journey of these Magi, in the same way, many of us are distracted by our sins, many of us are distracted by our unbelief, by our pessimism, by our procrastination. Name them. There are many things that distract us from focusing on the star. As for the presence of the star, it is eternal. The presence of the star is always there. So, dear friends in Christ, let us remember that we are invited today to trust in God who reveals himself to us. The Magi entrusted frankincense, gold, and myrrh to the newborn king. The question you should ask yourself today, I should ask myself today is, what are the important things I should entrust to God? What are the things I should hand over to God? What are the things I should give to God? I am thinking that the two major things we should give to God are our soul and our body. We are created as composite beings. The two best things we can give to God our soul 
and our body. Then we can give him our relationship, we can give him our health, we can give him our marriage, we can give him our business, we can give him our faith, we can give him our morality, we can give him so many things, our desires, our longings, our yearnings, name them, our sicknesses, our disappointments, our frustrations, our depression, give them over to God and he will refine them and give them back to us as graces, as blessings and favors. So as we celebrate this epiphany, let us surrender ourselves to God who reveals himself to us so that he may make us the best version of who we are. Happy Sunday to you.